about art and the church uh, I never thought about it even when I become a believer when I grew as I was grew, growing up I always had some kind of talent to draw and but you know my parents always told me you know well there's no money son in that that's for wacky people crazy people you know you need to be an architect you need to be a civil engineer and my life took that course you know I finished high school with particular emphasis on civil engineering, and then I enroll into uh, civil engineering faculty. And then when I was 21, war started in, in Bosnia. But just before that, uh, Jesus came into my life, maybe six months before that. And I grew up in an orthodox context. I'm coming from a mixed marriage, and uh, I know that today, one of my friends jokes, you know, today mixed marriage means that one, side, one uh, part of the marriage is a male and the other is female, you know, these days. But in my time, it was that my father was Serbian Orthodox and my mother is Bosniak Muslim. So in a time of Yugoslavia, a time of socialism and... Uh, some people call it communism. We had communism life compared to some countries presented here. Uh, in time of socialism, uh, mixed marriages were encouraged. Uh, people tried since 1945 to create one country with one nationality, basically, which would be everybody will be Yugoslavian. Nobody will be Serbian, Croatian, Slovenian, Macedonian, Bosnia, whatever, you know. Everybody will be Yugoslavian. It was a not really successful project, but we had a huge number of mixed marriages. But I grew mostly under the uh, in, in environment of Orthodox Christianity. So that now there is this oxymoron in, in former and socialist countries that, that there would be very typical that people will say, I'm Orthodox atheist. So that means that Orthodox is a heritage, but they do not really believe in God. And, uh, and they have some loose connections with the church, but not really. Some people were afraid to express their religious sentiment. Uh, like my grandfather, there's a big portion of his life where he was kind of afraid to express his sentiment. But then probably in the 70s, this strong communist ideology started to loosen its grip. And he started to celebrate uh, Easter, Christmas, and his family saint, okay? And from my early childhood, I remember one icon that my great-grandfather brought from the Russian, very expensive coat and in a gold icon above the bed of my grandparents, you know? And it was Jesus icon, it was no, nobody else but, but Jesus. And uh, when I become a believer, you know, in, in Orthodox, really Pentecostal church, I was thinking finally I can pursue my passion and uh, I will start to paint icons you know, in, in the church. But then very soon I was, uh, I realized that there is no space for such a thing in Pentecostal church or evangelical churches, even though the pastor who was uh, very instrumental in my early days of Christianity, he himself was a painter. Not a professional painter, but uh, amateur, quite good. And he was taking the classes when he came to be a missionary in Sarajevo in 1988. He was taking the classes of one of the most famous Bosnian painter, woman, and her name is Misa Todorovic. And somehow he was remembered in some art circles as somebody who was taking classes at her 
home and her studio. Anyway, very soon war started and he left and we, our contact was disappeared. But uh, what happened that in his apartment, he left a lot of paint and, and one old easel and some canvases. And I saved that material from his apartment. And 15 years, uh, 15 years later, really maybe even 17 years later, for the first time in the beginning of maybe 2010, I took those paints, you know, luckily some oil paints never dry up really, you know. So I took those paints and I, I start to paint. Um, and the reason for that was uh, that I went through the treatment for hepatitis C. And, uh, and that was very hard on, on my psyche. <laughs> uh, I become depressed, you know, I need something to, to keep myself in line. I was, I was still pastoring, you know, it was very demanding and challenging time in, in, in the history of our church. And I needed some, uh, something just to keep on my focus and I started to paint. And, um, and I never thought that it would be very, that it, I will become a serious in that, but uh, it looked like that, you know, as more I did it, more I like it. And I decided that I will really uh, uh, persist even when the treatment was over and uh, all of my troubles were gone. Luckily, praise to God, but I continue, I continue to, to paint. And of course, now I might say that, that evangelical Christianity in, uh, in the Balkan countries are still in the cradles, you know, even though in Croatia and in Serbia, and maybe in, in, in Slovenia, there are several, several generations of evangelical Christian. Church was never big, you know. If you speak about Croatia, altogether there's not more than 10,000 practicing evangelical believers uh, today. Even in Serbia, there's not much more. But when it comes to my context in Bosnia and Herzegovina, because my country was 500 years under the Turkish and Ottoman Empire, we never had any uh, contact with the Protestantism, let alone evangelicalism, and anything that came after Protestant Reformation. Somehow Balkan Peninsula was locked for uh, Protestant missionaries. Maybe in the early days, it was a strategy of Martin Luther and early reformators because they were thinking, you know, it's better that Catholic Church fight on two fronts, you know, with Protestants on the north and also with the Muslims southeast. You know, they had two threats. <laughs> they're, little, they're a little bit reluctant to send missionaries in, in this, this part of the part of the world. But later on, because of probably because of this influence and still continuous presence of, of Islam, you know, we never had Protestant churches really in any larger large numbers. But when, when we think about Bosnia and Herzegovina, that is more than 50% Muslim country now, and Sarajevo, where I live, is probably 95% Muslim. You know, we didn't have any meaningful Protestant church uh, until the end of 20, 20th century. You know, and end of 20th century saw so maybe attempts to plant few, few churches. And I would say that 1992, when war in Bosnia started, we had five churches, and in all these five churches, there are more less than 100 believers. So, and then war started, and all of these churches stopped working, and most of the believers left. And I think that probably 1993, we can speak that there was not more than maybe 20 evangelical believers left in the country without any church, any formal meetings, any even fellowship. You know. But then from the ashes, those remnants, and I, I was one of them, we start to build small fellowships, start to organize churches, denominations, and, and build slowly, uh, actually what, what never existed. We, we never had anything that we could call movement. And uh, uh, now, 20, uh, 30 years since war started in Bosnia, almost 30, 29 years, uh, 22 years, we have maybe 25 churches and we have maybe around 1,000 believers. 
you know so it's 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 quite a big growth from 20 to 1000 but it took us 30 years and of course because of all the economic problems and political problems that we have now we have trends in the last maybe five six up to ten years that people are leaving and you cannot even stop some evangelical believers are leaving from here but what i want to say is that when we speak about art and the church and this this connection i would i would say that even though there are some similarities and probably a lot of people can share the stories that they were not encouraged to be artists because of economic and other reasons and also they, they are kind of never felt encouraged to practice their gift or never heard that those gifts could be uh, useful in the life of the church you know in any capacity i still believe that we are in a little bit different position than the and maybe rest of the world and the places where evangelical Christianity or Protestant Christianity is more better established and have deep roots in the history of countries. Why? Because even though we feel that, uh, I would say, baggage from the past of Protestant Reformation, iconoclasm and all of this kind of stuff, we are still at a place where we are uh, creating our own rules we are new and this is really good we are new and uh, and most of our churches are living in the context of mission we really do not have big churches and we are always thinking how to reach out to society how to build bridge with society how to how to participate in society how to uh, how to uh, somehow uh, raise our flag you know how to say hey we are here we exist um, and uh, so that creates a lot of opportunity for art and the artist because typically if you have really good musician and want to do a concert i think that every church would be open to host a concert for for one of them if you are a very good artist and uh, you know, you want to, to do an exhibition in the church and you speak with pastors. It's a high probability the church will be open to do something like that. Most of the times they do not know how to do it, what to expect, and there needs to be some kind of negotiation and education and, uh, and, and, and the work about it. But generally speaking, I think the churches will, will be open uh, to, to use artist and artistic gift now um, the thing is what kind of artist what 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 can be appropriate for the church for the church setting and i sometimes there is a disconnect you know because some high profile artists you know maybe contemporary and so, so on uh, they will not find really door open as much as they would like because sometimes ideas that they present are too radical for uh for your other artists not <laughs> let alone some local pastor who doesn't have much training and understanding of art and so on but i would say the most of the cases you know this, this kind of connection can, can be made and uh, and church can become a place where artists can thrive and, and fulfill their mission what probably what probably is not going to happen it's not it, what will not happen is that uh, pastors are looking specifically for artists in the congregation and see how they will uh, uh, use them or uh, or somehow uh, you know try to help them that they find their place in life of the congregation with their specific gift and gift. But uh, speaking about that, then what we are trying to do is trying to educate or kind of encourage artists to make steps toward the, the pastor, to make steps toward the local church, with a, not with a big expectation, but step by step, little by little, opening uh, those doors where, uh, where somehow they will, be that kind of click you know that kind of uh special bondage bond that it will be created for a 
for the, for the future. And um, so I would say that in a, in a context where I'm coming from, everything is hard and everything is slow. So one thing that is working for our advantage is that none of us really, whether on the side of the local church, speaking about pastors or speaking about few artists that we have, nobody expects anything to happen overnight. And, uh, and, and that, that's, the, that's the advantage because, uh, you know, slowly these good and crucial relationships can, can be built, you know. And I cannot say that we saw a lot of disappointment in the, this area or some kind of big disconnect between artists and the local church because uh, we learn probably because we are so small that every person is valuable, every gift is valuable, uh, and anything that can be used to somehow reach out outside of the uh, walls of the church is valuable in, in the eyes of the local pastor, local church, and, and leadership of, of these churches. So, and especially then having in mind that we are, I'm, for example, myself, I'm living in an in Islamic context, in a context where majority, 95% of population are Muslim, the church is really stuck in, a, in, in, in a ways, in a creativity, how to reach out to, to that community, you know, and um, then that's also the, I personally saw that that mind of an artist come into the play because usually artists are people who have a capability and capacity to think outside of box. Of course, you know that Islamic culture is not generally very open toward the visual art. But uh, there's a probably big, I would say up to 30% of Muslim population in Bosnia that are not very religious. So among that, in that group, you have a lot of people who doesn't care about the traditional Islam, and they are very keen uh, to be in a touch with, with art world and so on, whether through painting or music or theater or, uh, or uh, movies, different, different stuff, literature and so on. Some great writers live here, some great painters came from, from this area. So, some of them are from Muslim background. You know, that, that's not a big, a big problem. But I think that artist's mind works well in thinking outside of box and to create opportunities, not necessarily using their particular gifts, but, you know, helping local leadership, helping the pastors, you know, to think creatively how to reach out into community you know, because they are usually very good in thinking. Now, speaking about my church, because I'm pastor and artist, I'm very much surrounded with people who can do a lot of thinking, but little working, you know. So that's sometimes a problem <laughs> with, uh, with uh, having a, a lot of artistically minded people in the church, because everything is in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the world. But, uh, uh, but you know, in the context like ours, I would say that this is this is very helpful to have people who are uh, open-minded and uh, I'm just receiving yeah from team. There was one uh, Tim is asking about uh, some some artists who will be. Uh, who have a geometric type of uh, work, you know, it's like a geometric abstract work, you know. There was a very uh, quite famous artist in the 60s and 70s in Croatia, Miroslav Šute, coming from, from, from this area. But I cannot really, uh, you know, recall anybody who is doing that type of the work. But there are these Muslim artists who are uh, who are using calligraphy or geometric art 
and uh, some of them are quite quite good but their work is considered to be strictly religious oriented i do not believe that they are touching too much uh, outside of the world but what their purpose is that they are strengthening uh, islamic community through performance of their art i think you know art shouldn't be evangelistic and even muslims know that if they are really educated they do not necessarily think i will use art to reach out to unbelievers you know if that happens it's great they are doing a lot of true dance sufi dance and so on they have a lot of poetry really good in those kind of stuff but i think that it, i believe also the way how we approach this we are using out to build our own community as well to enlarge our spirit to enlarge our mind to enlarge our heart you know through uh, vessels of art as well as anything else i don't say that art is better than any other methods you know um, biblical uh, the bible schools or theological faculties there are all different ways how how to build up uh, believers and uh, in spiritual way but we, we believe that art is one of one of them but yes i cannot recall a lot of uh, geometric artists. sasha can i follow up with a question on that um thinking about you know the use of images and and what we think of like our kind of cliche christian imagery which has been sort of neutered in its uh use because it becomes cliche in the united states but when, in a context that's mostly muslim um is it something that artists need to to be very cautious about because there's uh some animosity even or perhaps i know that there there's even been um persecution of some muslims with let's like gone alongside of christian symbols so how do you feel about that as a as a christian artist it's not not really i would say that Bo bosnian islam is uh, is very open for uh for for art and some some of the great painters uh locally in sense of balkans are came from sarajevo and um and they are very proud proud of them and all of them are figurative artists you know so um i would say that islam in bosnia is not that radical it is becoming more radical in the last 30 years but it, it's not it's european islam i think i think that they are it, it's a smart version of islam you know and i think that typically evangelical uh, believers have a lot of stereotype about muslim, muslim world you know but and be my guest you know i will introduce you to dif to different islam you know islam where you know one there are some professors you know strongest feminists in the world are coming from from muslim background and they're, they're covered ladies and women there's the first uh covered woman uh teacher in harvard university maybe 10 years ago and she li she worked there for seven years i think and and thought is from sarajevo and she's she's a strong muslim but she's a feminist and uh, fight for a human right fighting for human rights and so on so it, it islam is more complex than than we uh than we sometimes present uh, uh and we understand it, it is so there there is no you know and of course you do not you do not if if you want you know to make bridge to make communication with, with us you do not go to radicals you know necessarily you know you go for open minded because even in our context you know if if you want to talk about art you do not go to to fundamental christians you know <laughs> you want to go to some who is open minded and start from there because it's more relaxed you know so um yeah so this is uh so i would say that uh that there is a big opportunity I think that we are we are living in in an interesting time when when some things in the evangelical churches are changing and and shifting. I'm not like philosopher where I can 
make you know, I would take a day to, to create some kind of argument ab about it. But I think that we are living in a time when young people, for example, they are almost afraid to say that they do not love art. You know. So especially this hipster, you know, and new generation, they it's some kind of it's a it's be, it become form of religion, I would say. I think that this is a big opportunity for for um, for us, you know, and because this kind of culture is touching church as well. And I would say that as never before, we were I would, me and few of my colleagues we were able to create some kind of movement within our small ch number of churches where it is normal that people are pursuing artistic vocation. And right now we are I having a kid from my church trying to enroll in Academy of Fine Arts. And they are, they are receiving only five students in Sarajevo. He is excellent uh, draftsman. He is, a, he is a great painter, you know. And I, we organize, uh, I organize his first exhibition in the church. And all of his family flock in the church, you know. Uh, his parents were members of, of our church for like 20 years. They never were able to bring one um, member of the family in the church ever 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 you know but when i organized exhibition of their child and uh, grandchild of some and so on they all flock and church was packed to see drawings of the young kid of 12 years old he was 12 years old and he did portraits of all of us in the church plus his family and he was so good you know and uh so that's one example. We have uh, two young pianists that now we are going to support. We found the scholarships that will support kids to go to higher university because there is a little bit of uh, kind of kind of thinking in Bosnia because of bad economical situation that there is no use of university education in a sense. And of course, having a church, a little bit of anti-intellectual kind of always atmosphere you know we we decided some 15 years ago to fight against it and i created a fund and we as a church start, are starting businesses to fill up that fund you know to to be able to support uh, kids to enroll in university if their parents cannot afford them so um, and we are now have uh, two young girls from kind of deprived families you know but great artists and and one of them will soon go to probably to Croatia to, to study um, for to be a pianist and, and so on. So those kind of stuff, you know, and, and more and more and for graphic design, for example, we have several kids that some first steps they took on our summer camps when I was organizing workshops uh, for artistic workshop and so on. And now they're enrolling to be a graphic designer, you know, something that typically uh, their families would not support unless they were supported by the church, you know, because now we have some kind of authority as a pastor, you know, and then when they say, you know, well, but, you know, pastor encouraged me, you know, then they, uh, they will be kind of released into pursuing uh, their, you know, something that their heart is calling, calling them to. So this is a, um, but I have a little PowerPoint, I, I mean, presentation. If you want to see some of my works and I, I will kind of go through. I know that this, this part, I was not really, it was really. Sasha, that was going to be my question. Tell us about your art. Now, yeah. now we can me, see it. Can I share my screen? Hopefully, huh? Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. Yeah. So the type of art that I am doing is mostly uh, under in the category of mixed media and uh, predominantly on paper. I do not have big studio. I, I have big apartment though, so I I have my own study and uh, I can work in my in my room. If I'm making a bigger paintings, then I usually do it in the church, but. Um, it's a mixed media and paper, and the process goes like this. I do print. I bring something that would be 
in, in a category of monotype. It's a one of a kind uh, print. And then I'm adding the layers of paint and, uh, and the collage and cut out paper. So the one, one thing, probably the, the reason for that is, is the process. As, as I told you, I started to do art to, you know, to help myself, <laughs> you know, to going through the difficult time of, of a, almost like a chemo treatment, you know. So I enjoy to be lost in the process. You know, I, I, I don't care how long I will work on something even though I do not have a lot of time to work on, on but, but still, you know, I love process as well as, you know, finished finish product. So let's go with some early days, 2011, 2012. So those, those would be some of my first, you know, let, I would say serious work. You know, I will go slowly through. So this is Icarus. I will not say anything about, I will not speak too much about. So most of these are on paper. And uh, so you can see here, Linocut and, uh, and some gold paint, just abstract composition. So, and in 2011, I was invited by the, by the church in Bosnia to do exhibition to boost events for a day of reformation. So this is the, of course I accepted. And most of the, most of my exhibitions are in the church context or uh, NGOs in order to boost some events that they have. to so attract uh, more, I would say, interest for, for the, for the event, and in that way, uh, I'm kind of I was able to, to present my work. People can see it, but from the other side, I'm, I'm helping. I, I'm helpful to the church, even though it's a big work, you know, and sometimes it, it's even costly. But I I decided that I will really try to promote art in the church as much as pos possible, not only visual art but also music and everything. And I'm sometimes inviting people to come with me and to perform and so on. But these are some of the early, early attempts. Of course, churches are not suitable. Church walls are not suitable for any kind of exhibition. So you need to be creative, you know, how to, how to exhibit, how to put things together. So this is a, maybe two years later, 2013, 14. I'm, uh, I'm experimenting. I do not have some fixed, idea how my work is going to look like. So this period is usually typically, yeah. So in 2014, uh, there was a big flood everywhere in Europe, but in Bosnia as well. So uh, I put together, I called together a few organizations together with my church and we organized art exhibitions. So we called uh, visual artists from that one particular town that was badly, severely affected by the flood to donate works for exhibition that will be, you know, uh, that works could be sold for sale in order to make uh, funds to give to the local municipality to to fight the, the damage from, from war. So here is my, my work. And this guy, this painting I bought myself, I also started my private collection in order to build bridges with, ad, with other artists. And I specifically have a great relationship with one uh, guy who is writing a horror novel, but actually he's visual artist and, and doing the, doing excellent drawings. But unfortunately, because he cannot make a living out of this, he started to write horror <laughs> novels. And, uh, but actually he's a, he's a friend from the kid from my, from my school. And I become like his supporter. So I'm kind of helping him and pushing him, buying his work on the regular, semi-regular, regular basis in all, in all as, as, as he is growing in his, in his career, you know, even though I do not really have money. So, a lot of time when I sell some my works, I put that money into buying his his works because 
just to just, just to be helpful be of help you know but this guy here on the, on the wall he's a, a famous painter from that little town and also a professor in in the school that we as a church have relationship and we do a lot of humanitarian projects with with this church and and this friendship and this exhibition and some other actions opened the door so now we are uh, after six years now we have some families missionary families and they are actually planting the church in that little town that was completely closed for the gospel you know like 10 years ago if you ask you know is there ever going to be some kind of serious work in that town probably nobody will say yes but now you know through these little steps uh, some things are moving forward so this is uh another experimentation it's work on the pieces of metal it's a collage on the metal plates rust rusted metal metal plates and and this one is for natalie you know i just put it because <laughs> she knows what it's on her wall and this one is for charles he lost it on the way back home <laughs> and i made him a print so this is a little bit more complicated work with, with monotype at, at the bottom and then layers of transparent transparent paper and some some collage uh, so and this is painting from 19 1916 but i submitted that in serbia for a bnl biennale of collage in uh, international biennale of collage in novi sad through some con crazy connections and uh, and I was so happy that you know in in the secular world my work will be exhibited because it was never before that anyone was interested in my work but they accepted the collage through you know selection and then actually they informed me I was not able to go but they informed me that it won the third prize it's called Fallen Angel and um, it's one for third prize on Biennale of Collage. So this is like uh, last two two years, still experimenting with the with the collage techniques and using some photographs with my friend, and still doing like monotype paintings like before. And also the one way to reach out into communities i painted these two paintings on the wall for for my friend who opened the cafe and uh, and it was really good because i had a lot of contacts with the people asking about my work you know being surprised that i'm a pastor you know i had a lot of conversation uh with people because of that but also it boosted a little bit you know business of, of my friend so this this is a kind of good uh good match you know where artists sometimes i would say need to be maybe generous i mean like if i don't live off my art so i can i can afford to be generous you know don't don't get me wrong but you know sometimes it's good uh to be involved in community in community life this cafe is close to to the church and uh and you know like whole neighborhood uh because of that even is much more aware of the presence of the of the church because of this cafe because owners are members of my church but then also through conversations with me as well as a pastor and somebody in whose art they are interested so, so keep that keep that picture up and look at yourself sasha it's like a medieval painting you see the halo above your head you are a saint sasha the and halo is running away from you, Charles. <laughs> Your halo is a bit misplaced. Yeah. No, I'm I'm the fallen angel, but you're the, you're the angel. <laughs> Good. So these are some photos of of the of the of my I would call it guerrilla exhibition. You know, it's it's exhibitions in the churches. Uh, where I'm boosting some kind of event of the local church. So this is a local Baptist church. 
and they asked me, can you exhibit, we have special event, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, of course, I, I build these black panels that I can transport and put my works on paper, you know, so it's, it's quite easy. It takes me a few hours to get there, to put everything. And, uh, but then it's, it's, it adds a little bit of flavor to whatever is going on in the local churches for whatever reasons. Usually it's a Christmas service, Easter service, uh, day of reformation, that's typically, or some conferences and some outreaches that, that churches are, are doing. Um, so this is in lo local intervarsity uh, space. So I also put exhibition and um, for some mission, mission week, you know, there's nice, nice conversation. I'm regularly go there and, and doing art talks as well, uh, presenting certain historic paintings and trying to explain a uh, bit of, of a deeper meaning, artist intention. And if opportunity presents, probably usually through Q&A, then I would bring a spiritual, spiritual message uh, in it. So this is that this event is happening in Slovenia, for example, and I, I did series of talks in a different towns. Uh, and I, I was using here famous painting by Hans Holbein, the ambassadors. It's excellent painting to, to talk about history, reformation, but then as well to bring a, a, a gospel and the spiritual, spiritual topic you know, on, on a table. And, um, and so this is exhibition in, in, uh, in Osijek, in Theological, Evangelical Theological Seminary. Uh, we organized a night of poetry of C.S. Lewis, but then also I boosted event uh, with, uh, with my paintings. And this is the university that I study at. It's in Osijek. I know maybe some of you know Peter Kuzmic, you know, he's a de dean of, of this school, he's kind of famous name in evangelical world. He's leading expert on um, you know evangelical Christianity in a communist context. So and also I'm I'm having the art classes in the church because in Sarajevo, apart from our mother church, we have a church plant in the suburb, and uh, and I started maybe. 2014 art classes called Art Venture. Most of the, you know, those that are coming to that were, you know, from, from the secular world. I was teaching them to, to paint, to draw some basics. It was exhausting. It's very hard. You know, I, most of the time I did it alone. I had some, some help. So in last uh, year and a half, I discontinued. I could not keep up with all of my but for several years, I was running this. It's a great opportunity it's happening in the church. It's very good. So this is as well some of the uh, yeah, project from, from that. I used Charles Barg famous course uh, for a self-taught artist. It was said that Vincent van Gogh went three times through all the plates of that, of that course drawing and teaching himself how to how to draw and also in in my church so this is the, the church that i'm i'm pastoring you know we are you know very quickly we can turn church service into a you know drama play and uh you know theater and this picture on the top left is we adapted um c.s lewis uh, great divorce book and we turned it into one and a half hours play so we played that several times and then so this is some kind of children plays that we do on the regular basis on, over christmas time every year around one and a half thousand kids go to our church from the from whole sarajevo and watching that play and receiving some small gift christmas christmas gift and I think in the last 20 years, this most than anything else put our church on the map in Sarajevo. That when people ask, 
you, know, people, you ask people, do you know where evangelical church is? They would say, yes, you know, because I went there as a kid or I took my kids there for children, children play. But also we do this bottom uh, photo is, uh, you know, some adult uh, play drama, also concerts of faith. So this is my friend from Croatia. His name is Andrei Grozdanov. He's a professional musician, but, uh, and this year he won just maybe a, a month ago, he won the biggest prize in Croatian music for spiritual album, you know, and after five times, five years in a row, he was nominated for his work. And then finally he, he got, it and he, it, it's a great joy uh, that he was also performing in, in our church. In his church in Rijeka, they are typically once a month, they are turning church into jazz concerts and they give the main hall and, uh, you know, local jazz bands are coming and, and performing in, in, the, in the church. They have some kind of deal with them. And of course, most of all, I'm, I'm a husband, you know, this is my, my wife. I have two sons, uh, Feja and Vanya, 19 and 18 years old so i will stop sharing thank you so much sasha does did let's have any uh questions does anybody have any questions or comments for sasha don't be shy Just a, a, a side question that um, in Paris, we, we've done a couple shows with a, an artist from Sarajevo. His artist name is Fouad, F-A-U-D. I wonder if you've ever met him. Is he he lives in Paris now, but he was in, he was in Sarajevo up through the war. Is he a painter? He's a painter, yeah. I don't know him. Okay. There's probably a lot of, because I, I'm not trained trained painter and artist, there's probably a lot of them whom I do not know. If they do not exhibit on the, lo on the local salons right. and so on, that I'm not familiar with their name, you know, and uh, maybe their faces. Yeah, he's been exhibiting in Paris for the last 20 years or more, yeah. Sasha, do you have um, a website where you actually have, have for all of your artwork? I do. I don't have all of my artwork. I'm, to put I'm, it? I'm kind of, I'm kind of sloppy, but I would. I also, yeah, if you would l be willing to drop it into the chat box, that would be great. Um, you talked both about the significance of process. Um, not being so concerned about, or the, the spiritual practice maybe, the, the significance of process of um, beginning doing art, for example. Um, but you also talked about the significance of excellence, exhibiting amongst, uh, you know, outside of the church and that kind of thing. Um, I'm wondering how you would talk about the relationship between those two and how you encourage both in the church or where you kind of draw lines and, you know, sometimes you have to tell an artist, maybe this isn't good enough to exhibit in the church yet or something like that. So ch church setting is a uh, not so good artist friendly, you know, so because, you know, you know who is going to come to the church typically, you know, so then, but when you have really good one, quality stuff, then you can invite more people. So that, that's sometimes there's this, you know, when I said that we, I organized show for the kid, you know, from my church with growing great, you know, it was mostly for, for his family, you know, but we do advertise a bit because it was, you know, he, he's a like almost prod, prod, prodigy kid. You know, I think that you can easily classify that, that kind of stuff, but, you know, I, I do encourage people uh, for excellence. And I think that maybe sometimes too much. I, I'm sometimes not very sens sensitive, you know, per person. 
I'm, I'm very much straight, straightforward and, and, and so on, but um, I get away with that somehow with people, but yeah, we, we, I do encourage, yeah. But excellence does not erase process. I mean, process is a part of getting to, to an excellence. If, 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 if I think, let it take what it takes. But I think for, for artists, sometimes, you know, people are, cannot understand that process is very important. I remember that Liviu Mokan talked about this two years ago, three years ago, on a, and he was a little bit irritated that when we did our presentations, very few of us are talking about the process of material that we use and, and you know, com complexities, uh, hardships that we are facing in managing material and, and so on, because there is much more in the process of creation of artwork than final artwork. And to say, well, this is a tree, this is a house, this is a anguish or scream, you know, the, there's much more be, behind it. And I, I think that also, of course, you cannot talk about it with everybody, but, you know, I think that this, this, in, in artist circles, you know, we, we talk about this. When I, when I meet with my friend that I'm kind of collecting his work, he always needs to tell me how he gets to, the, to these drawings, how the process, how, much, how many hours, you know, and because I want to learn actually from him, his excellent draftsman. So, and we talk about these processes and then some kind of even meaning behind because I'm I'm a lot of I'm cutting and pasting, you know. I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about my my life, it's so much cut and paste, cut, 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 reusing, re reusing all material, you know. So this all has some spiritual significance, you know, somehow redeeming uh, the, the pieces of newspapers that you know will finish in, in the trash. You know, there, there's a lot of meaning in uh, in, in, a, in a Christian message, you know, of, of, you know, not throwing away, but, you know, seeing as valuable, even though at, at the first sight, it can be, what can you do with this, you know, but then when you find the right place for that cut out, for that piece of, of paper, you know, and it sits perfectly in your painting, in your vision, then you see it was not to be thrown away, it was something that it find, finally find his true home, I would say. And um, so that, that kind of stuff, you know, you know what I mean. And also the layers, when we speak about layers, you know, our lives are complex, you know, we cannot, like for example, question about Muslims, if we speak about, you know, if, Every, everything is more complex that appears at the first sight, you know. And I think that we can build really good relations with anything around us, with, with the world around us and the people around us. Only if we, if we approach with that, it, it will take time to get really to the, uh, to the true, to the heart of the, of the matter, with people, with, with objects, with the history, with, with the place, you know. Everything has some kind, and even if you want to make sense of our world today of with the racism or even COVID and things like that, you know, so it's so, and sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm so burdened with these complexities that it's hard to, hard to live with it. But if, if you want to get to the heart of the matter, you need to dedicate some time to, to understand. And, uh, and then it can give you a right to speak maybe to share, to add something to, to the topic, to the discussion, to the, yeah. I have a question. Um, I, I, I know that in Paris uh, for many years, th there was a, a couple churches that uh, attracted artists. One of them had an artist as a pastor, uh, another, well, actually in both cases, it was true. One was a musician, one was a theater actor. Um, I wondered if it, because you are an artist, have you naturally attracted other artists, Christian or non-Christian, that have gravitated towards your church as a result? I think that they feel, they feel more at home 
in, in the church where artist is a pastor. But I also encourage many of them to, to stay, I mean, to be in their, their own churches or to go to, to other churches just to, to, create a cult, to, to create a culture of, you know, that it is normal to have art. It's kind of even beneficial, you know, that they can be helpful addition with their gifting in a congregation of any size, I would say. I'd like to comment on this a little bit. I think that many pastors are more artistic than they think or than they were taught to think that they are. Because to be an effective preacher, you have to apply uh, artistic principles and creativity to your craft of preaching. Tim Keller, uh, the great pastor from New York, uh, was criticized that he was uh, saying and writing that the arts are very much needed in order to reach the community, uh, uh, he and and that that he should just uh, keep to preaching, and he he gave a one sentence reply. He says preaching is an art, and uh, it actually is. Uh, Jesus, when Jesus preached, it was artistically. Uh, with his stories, with his poems, with his surprise endings. Uh, it was his artistic expressions in his spiritual work that caught people's attention. And I think most pastors don't know that they're artists and if they and that, that they have in, in a sense uh, an artistic responsibility uh, in the execution of their pastoral duties. Um, and maybe that's one of the um, that's one of the privileges that we who are pastors and artists, I, I am also both, uh, perhaps we can say that to other, to other, not only preachers, but this is something that, that, that uh, we can communicate, um, that art is not just for the wackos, like you said, although I do think you are a bit wacko. Yeah. For example, I participated to, there's one big conference for men. I hate men and women conference, but there is conference for men. Okay. It's almost like a boot camp for manly men. And there is like three, 300 men, you know, uh, at that conference. And the, the organizing team was from the beginning, want me into in the board. And I said, it's not for me, guys. You know, I, I have other priorities. I go to Poland in that time, you know, for ELF. So, but when it was in Bosnia, I joined them. And I said, I, I will do art workshop. I said, okay, good. So we are all presenting our workshops, you know. So it was almost a shame to be, you know, an artist in that kind of environment, you know, it's, it's, it's really manly, you know. And then I went to present my, I said, look, I'm not a manly man. You know, a little bit more, you know, I have a little bit of fe feminine side in, in myself, you know. But I said, you know, if you want to, I, I'm doing an artist workshop, you know. We will paint, we will draw, you know, we will have fun talk about art. If you are willing, you can, you can come. And then I have 30 people, I have 10% on that, on that conference. So when, when, I talk with the, when I talk with the pastors, I say, if, if we neglect creatives if we just do a boot camp and things like that we will we are just losing one portion of society there's a, there's a portion of society who is drawn to to art you know for them it's a it's a it's a big matter it's a fashion you know for some of them i don't see it right it is a matter of life and death you know it's not good but it, 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 this is how it is as i said if we need to be faithful to the mission of god you know to reach out to everybody we need to find a space for this segment of life in the church. It will not be most important. It will not be most prominent, maybe. But there must be something. It should be something. If we need to be faithful to our mission to bring the gospel to everybody. And this, for some, this, this is going to be connecting point. And that, that, that conference that I'm talking about was... Uh, I think six, seven years ago in Bosnia, because they are shifting countries 
And there's a friend of mine, pastor in Croatia, who said, my son fell in love because it's like a boot camp, men's coming and bringing their, their sons. And he said, my son fell in love with, with, with the art. And now he's pursuing artistic, slowly artistic, you know, career in, 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 in his life. You know? so it, for me, it's a big reward, you know, I, I can say. Another example is that uh, I can also say on my on, on artwork, I do not have her picture. On my on art venture that I call art workshop, you know, that I was I was doing that with the last bit of my energy that I had in my body, you know, for many years. And uh, the woman appeared and she is in her late 60s. Through the war, she lost the two sons and then now she lost husband. And she was completely devastated and strong atheist, a uh, very intellectual woman. But when finally husband died, you know, it was like a final nail in, in her body. You know, she, she cracked down and she became very depressed. And, uh, and she is, a, her, her husband is a brother of one of our sisters. And she was never, you know, and this, her sister was, Actually, my nanny, she took, took, took care of my, my kids and when, when, they, when they were young, you know, and uh, she was invited to church and she accepted because she was in a desperate situation. And she started to paint, you know, and actually she, she was good, you know. To make long story, long story short, you know, through, through two years of coming through, through our adventure, she discovered that actually she's a poet. And she started to write the poetry. And now she publish, she's publishing her fourth book. She's a member of the, of the local association, I mean, country association of the poets. She, she regularly go on their meetings. She regularly reading her poetry, you know, in, in the world completely apart from, from the church. But she, she just changed, you know. So now I know that art have this kind of therapeutic as well <laughs> possibilities. That I, I'm never pursuing that because I'm not really uh, good in that. But I was doing a little bit of my pastoral counseling, talking with her, just, just trying to be friends without any agenda, respecting that she is a you know, relative of, of nanny of my kids and, uh, and my sister pro, from the church. You know. But somehow, without maybe, I did my part, but I really believe that God lifts her up because and how she finished it's completely something that i did not have influence to but somehow her spirit was lifted but the early early steps were this small art workshop where almost like in a private atmosphere she, she was able to come and for two two hours maybe forget about her life that was so tragic you know to lose two sons through the war uh, because of nationalism, because of human uh, evil and meanness, you know, and then finally husband that is like final support in her life, you know, so, so we, I think that I don't want to preach that art should be, you know, evangelistic tool, I would say, but I think that as we are faithful to it, things will happen, you know, if, if you are faithful engineer, you know, you will draw some. If you are faithful medical doctor, you will, you know, your life will be appealing. Something will happen, you know. People will ask questions, and like in any profession, you know. And now you're preaching. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. A sure is comes in the word. Yeah, that's your art, also. Hey, we are grateful. Sasha, what a great presentation and story. So I just want to say thank you so very much. Um, my heart is filled with joy right now. Um, you know, Sasha, I, it was my joy to visit with you in your home and your church and your, your country. I hope to uh, visit again in the, you know, in the future as we've spoke, uh, as, as we have spoken. But uh, thank you so, so much. <clears throat> um, 
I see that there's a question here. Just said, let me just look at it here. Uh, oh, oh, uh, 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 let's see. Tim, Tim, uh, you have a comment in the chat. Why don't you just say your comment out loud, okay? Uh, I can't first, hear you. First, oh, okay, go ahead. If we had more time, I'd love for it to be a follow-up question for Sasha, but I also just thought I'd throw it out there as a kind of a thought. I, I wonder about that connection between art as a spiritual practice and if we invited more people into doing art for the sake of it being a spiritual practice, and that was the goal, um, it wouldn't be so scary for so many people and people wouldn't feel like, oh, I'm not an artist. But when, when we are so product oriented or the finished product oriented uh, and, and so excellence oriented, sometimes we scare people off. But I wonder about some sort of way of imagining doing art in the church that is um, uh, graduating from one to the other, where for some people it may remain just a spiritual practice their whole lives. And for other people, they may have incredible talent that needs to get out there to the rest of the world and be in competitions and, and that sort of stuff. Um, and we shouldn't necessarily measure those two people against each other. And, and uh, I would add that, that we shouldn't be dividing Christian artists from non-Christian artists, but open it up to artists, period, and uh, work with the people who show up with a variety of needs and backgrounds that want to explore art and uh, those relationships just go in amazing ways. And I think uh, the illustration that Sasha gave is a good one. Well, I love you all. I'm very happy to see you here today. And uh, we will gather again the first Wednesday in August. At That's the... uh, July 5th. July 5th? Yeah, I mean, August 5th. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm a time traveler. Yeah, the first, uh, <laughs> the first Wednesday in August is July 5th. <laughs> um, uh, August 5th, at the same time, which is 6 o'clock in the evening, Eastern European time, Latvia time. <clears throat> okay, so you all know what time zone you are in. Uh, and uh, we will have another special guest with us. And in the meantime, if, if, uh, if you're interested in maintaining individual communication and contacting, and I would, I love the idea of, of this, this group mentoring each other, getting to know each other. There's an awful lot of experience, heart, talent, and maturity uh, that, that we have gathered here today. Uh, I'm very much encouraged by, um, by that. That's just super there. Sasha, once again, you're a wonderful brother, and God's giving you talent and platform, and uh, stay faithful. Uh, stay faithful to that. Thank you. It's yeah. a big privilege to be, be with you, and thank you. For it. it means a lot because I do not have fellowship with, with many artists here. It means a lot to have fellowship with, with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And y'all, if you uh, want to, in, I was in Texas yesterday, so I say y'all. Uh, <laughs> if, if, you, if, you um, uh, if you want to invite some people, tell us, tell us who they are and they'll get an invitation from us. Uh, as as well, this is international now, not just Baltics. Uh, in Absolutely. Day Arts. And feel free to forward. Um, I'll send out a, an invitation for next month's meeting, like August this meeting. Um, feel free to to forward it to any of your fellow um, artists, or even those who are, you know, interested in in what art looks like in the context of church and society and all the muddied waters between that we try to, to froth up. Um, the other thing I was gonna say is if you have a desire to share with the group, please email me and let me know if you have certain questions that you would really love to hear discussed, please shoot them my way. Um, and if you want to get in connection with each other and you don't have each other's contacts, then, you know, as long as everybody here, can you raise your hand if you're okay with me sharing your information, if somebody wants to get a hold of you? Okay, excellent. 
So um, any of those, just shoot me an email. Okay. Hey, let's, uh, let's have a prayer and close our time together. Dear Heavenly Father, you are beautiful um, beyond, our beyond our understanding and capacity to communicate. Uh, and thank you for who you are. Thank you for the individual gifts that we enjoy, that we have, even some that we don't know we have. And Lord, today, thank you for Sasha and for the way he's been used of you um, throughout the years in his homeland um, and in the, in the countries that surround Bosnia. Uh, give him strength and blessing, uh, uh, good health, uh, sound mind, deepened creativity, uh, and much fruit, and may that fruit remain and Lord, I thank you for each artist and musician and, uh, um, and lover of art um, that we have here today. Thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, until next time. Auf Wiedersehen. <laughs>